recognize that tune and you know it's time for relics radio this is a family friendly show so the entire family can join us as we talk metal detecting and relic hunting you can call into the show at 270-495-0315 or join in the chat and post any comments or questions you might have and we'll get to as many of them as we can You're listening to Relics Radio of Southern Kentucky and Middle Tennessee. And you are live with Relics Radio again. It is Thursday night, June the 28th, 2018. And we've got a real special show lined up for everybody tonight. I am your host, Digging with Seven. And I am your co-host, Tennessee Jeff. And we are just two rednecks. With a metal detector. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah, go, yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> we, we had some storms that in with Jeff. Buddy, we have, uh, unfortunately, uh, one of our good permissions that we got, one of our colonial permissions, uh, the old home site, it had a lot of big oak trees in the front yard, and uh, it uprooted a couple of those uh, last uh, yesterday evening around 5 o'clock, and today we've been cutting up uh, wood and trying to clean the yard up and stuff. And, of course, I'm looking at the uh, root balls trying to find relics. And like, well, stop looking for relics now. Help me cut. And of course, I was like, okay. <laughs> But yeah, hadn't found none yet. No, well, there there'll be some under there, I'm sure. Uh, I posted a little uh, live video on uh, Facebook yesterday. Uh, our tornado sirens were going off, and we had a uh, a monster looking wall cloud that came. And uh, I stayed out there for a little while, and then the wind started picking up, and I come in the house, and it blew everything off of our porch, all the furniture and and everything. And I had been in the creek, and I had, and I wear a size 13 tennis shoe, and they were soaking wet from being in the creek. And it blew them off the porch and blew them about 100 feet probably to the end of the drive. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's a good thing I wasn't in them. Oh, yeah, it's a good thing you're not wooden in them. And, you know, that takes a pretty good gust of wind to blow some wet shoes off the porch. It does, I tell you. Who we got in the chat here tonight, Jeff? Well, right now my chat evidently is locked up. I see no one in my chat, so. Oh, really? Well, yeah. uh, I, it was a little bit. Larry Stevens came in first, and then Ohio Relic Hunter. Uh, Mark Hoover is in, uh, Dennis is in, Bill Hayes is in, Jesse Rogers is in, uh, Jim Benita is in, and uh, Ringfinder is in. So we've got a few. Uh, I hope let you're, me. I hope you're. Yeah, let me refresh my uh, uh, speaker, and if I lose you, uh, just call me right back. Okay. Well. Uh, We'll do that. Oh, there he goes. I've got it now. I've got it now. Sure okay, enough. good. Uh, well, there's Forrest. Yep. 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 Ring Finder. Yep. yep. Mark Hoover. And yep. and Barb is in the house. <clears throat> Hello, Barb. Barb yep. said I'm I see here. everybody now. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Stevens was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Stevens was the first one, and Larry doesn't live too far from us. And he said, "Yay, rain! Yes, we have. We <laughs> have got a bunch of rain. There's no doubt about it. And we needed it. I tell you what, the ground was like concrete." I dug uh, a little bit, uh, mon- maybe Monday and Tuesday, and uh, I mean, boy, it's it, the ground was hard, so we needed the rain. Yeah, it sure was, and then, of course, right now, we could bottle some water up and send it to places that need water, so, I mean, that's... If y'all need a, if y'all need some water where you live, just uh, call us. We'll bottle you some water up and send it your way. And, <clears throat> and hey, brother, I missed you last week. Uh, not saying anything against Heath Jones, but it's just not the same whenever you're not in here with us. 
Uh, well, I was uh, at that little festival we go to every year selling uh, bags of ice, and uh, I buy them here locally and take them out there and sell them. So, I mean, it's it's a good deal. We made a little bit of money, and I had a good time doing it. So, I mean, it's just we do that, well, actually three times a year. And, and, and I miss being on the show. And, of course, down there you don't get cell phone uh, service or anything else. So, I mean, as soon as I got back home, I got all my – emails to go through and then of course everything else yeah yeah it uh he was uh jeff was off down there with hippies hippie fest is what he is at <laughs> yeah yeah it's called summer solstice in red bowling springs tennessee and i mean it's a good place you've got some real real great people down there and of course i mean you've got some well you've got some strange people i'll go ahead and say it you just have to, i mean it, it's all in good fun well, Heath and Scott, they had, they were down in Alabama. Of course, that's where they live. And uh, they put a picture up, and there was a bus, and it was all painted up, all flowery and rainbow. He said, the rainbow children, you know. And I said, yeah, they're headed down there where Jeff is at Red Bowling Springs at the Hippie Fest. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, i seen that where they posted that, and I was looking for that bus all weekend. I was like, well, surely they was coming up here. And, no, I think they were going to the Bonnaroo we have in, uh, what is it, Murfreesboro down yeah. around that area yeah, of yeah. That's, I've, I've never been down to that one but no i hadn't uh, either but it uh it's a big event too you know every year and uh oh, yeah. and we live in music country i mean you know in and around nashville uh it's all about music down here so uh uh you have a lot of those festivals and and uh you know those outdoor events and things like that Mm-hmm. Hey guys, we've got a good show tonight. We have got Rob Johnson on. You know him as Spud Digger on YouTube. How you doing tonight, Rob? I'm just awesome. Thank you for having me on the show. And as you can, as you can tell, Jeff, he's not a redneck, is he? <laughs> no, he he's not a redneck. I mean, he you could you can hear by the accent he's not a redneck. So. I love what you're talking about. I'm from Southern Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you got to say roll tide then. <laughs> roll tide, baby. There you go. That sounds pretty good. Now you're Heath. <laughs> now you're, uh, uh, no, you're good friends with Scott now, but Heath don't like it because Heath is an Auburn fan and Scott is an Alabama fan. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> roll tide. And, uh, we want to thank Mark Hoover because, uh, Mark, Vancouver is the one that got us in touch with uh, Rob and uh, helped us schedule this show. And uh, Mark's just a great guy, isn't he, Rob? Oh, he's fantastic. I uh, spent a weekend with him, and uh, he's one of the nicest persons you'll ever meet. We've had him on. Uh, We had him and... uh, Bill Marsh on at the same time, and uh, they were great guests, and uh, really, uh, really enjoyed them having them on. What? Yeah, sure yeah. If I can, I share a story about Mark. Real sure, quick? sure, <laughs> sure. Go ahead. We'll pay you. Great. So, <laughs> we'll pay. Great. So I did a spud digger event at an old ghost mine. It was a kind of a, a ghost town, a, an old gold mine, and he flew all the way from Florida to. Idaho and uh you know we we took him up there day early and uh I go up there with the the group and he just comes around the corner with the nicest bottle I've ever seen from that site and it was an old hair tonic bottle it had a silver cap on and he was just tickled pink and I was so jealous because I'd been hunting that place so many times for nice bottles and he comes around his first day and just, hey, look what I found. It's unbelievable. I'm sure you'll find it on his Facebook page, and, and and maybe he'll post it again to show it. But it was the best bottle I've ever seen. Yeah, and Jeff had a question about uh, about bottles, didn't you, Jeff? I sure did. Uh, how many bottles do y'all get into in these ghost towns and stuff? I know uh, oh. I heard a story yeah, of on. a lady that would – just drive up and down the road through these ghost towns. And then like, she found a lot of great bottles just on the side of the road. Now, I don't know if that was true or not. So maybe you can fill us in and, on that. And, and I have heard of that up in 
some parts in the desert in um, in Idaho, but in this particular area, um, I love finding the, a lot of tin because they didn't really have trash cans up there. They just kind of dug a big hole and filled it up basically. And uh, there was this one time I was out there and I found it was on the side of a hill and I, I got a really good hit and, and I was digging in and I, and I was just pulling tin out and loads of tin. And, and, and I thought there's got to be a dump here. And, and I put my shovel in and I heard some glass. So then I was really, really careful. And, and I pulled out, I think four or five bottles and they were beautiful. And the next time I was up there, I was on another hill and the same thing happened. And this was my most favorite bottle of all time that I've ever found up there. It was a 1930s old Clorox bottle and it still had the rubber stop in. And this thing was, was fairly big and it was just beautiful. It's brown. It, it, it's on one of my videos. I, I, you know, just look at old mining town or ghost town, or, uh, Diamondville, but it, it is the, the pride and pride and joy of bottles that I found out there. It's just beautiful. Man, that, that would be a great bottle. It sure would. And I mean, we've looked for uh, bottle dumps around here. Of course, the only ones that I really find here are from like maybe the 60s, 50s and 60s. And I mean, they're there, but they're covered up with uh, a lot of topsoil, I'm sure, right now. So yeah. you know, I'm just going to have to dig for them. We're, we've got a guest that's going to come on uh, July the 19th that does uh, ground penetrating radar. And they're using ground penetrating radar to find these, uh, well, Civil War pits and uh, huts and, you know, uh, trash pits and things around old houses. Uh, now, that would be the trick, wouldn't it, Rob? Yes, it definitely would. And that's, a, that, that's going to be an interesting show. I've seen a little bit of that on TV, and it's always interested me. Now, I would probably get some of my young kids to dig the holes. I'm I'm a little bit too old to be digging that far down, but uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I can't uh, I can't wait to have him on, and I think Jeff that he's going to go to some DIVs too. And uh, you know, if we have him on the show and get acquainted with him, maybe we can uh, follow him around and, and oh yeah, and. Uh, <laughs> dig a pit when he finds one that's that's right i'll follow him all day long and um a buddy of ours uh johnny white of course j doug he used to have one of the uh penetrating radar deals and then um he used it quite a bit and done real well with it and i haven't seen him use it in a while i don't know if uh he got rid of it or what but he he found a lot of pits with it i'm sure that you'd uh you'd uh, you know you'd have quite a bit of expense buying one of those but it would be uh it would be nice to have one hey rob where are you originally from yes sir. i'm uh, from a small town over in england uh called south shields and the closest biggest town is called newcastle a lot of people will say newcastle brown ale um i'm not a drinker myself but that's what comes from close to where i live is newcastle brown ale and um i'm from england wow did you ever metal detect over there you know i didn't and i always wanted to as a kid and i just i just didn't do it and it wasn't until i came over to america the land of the free uh that i started to metal detect uh I spent, do you, do you want me to give you a little brief history of who I am and where I came from and what I did over there? Yes, yes. Well, yes, yes. Perfect. So, uh, so as a young kid, I, uh, I grew up, you know, coal mine industry back up near Newcastle and then not many jobs up there. So I joined the British Navy. Um, I was in engineering school. I'm a weapons engineer. And I remember sitting in class, there was a class of 10 of us, and the officer came in and said, we need, we need five for submarines. And just went, one, two, three, four, five <laughs> submarines. And the, I was like, I don't want to go on submarines. I want, I want to go on aircraft carriers. So, <laughs> of course, when you're in the military, you don't have much to say. And uh, 
so I spent another three months in submariner school and and I just loved that. I uh, spent five years on submarines and had a lot of fun and, and, and it was just fantastic. And then I came over to America and uh, nobody really needed a weapons engineer to fix things. So I went into sales and, and I've been in sales ever since. Been over here about 20 years. I uh, used to talk a little bit differently than what I do. Nobody could really understand me. Um, they can barely understand me now. So you may need a translator to help the the listening public there to <laughs> understand what I'm saying. But uh, So, yeah, I've been over here 20 years. I lived in Utah for a little bit and then uh, moved to Idaho about 13 years ago. Man. That's that's great. Uh, well, you don't have to worry about anybody understanding you. If uh, they can understand us two rednecks, then they'll be able to understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah they they can under they can understand us all right. Uh, because most of the people we have on are rednecks too. They just won't admit it. You know, some of them. <laughs> yeah, but, that's uh, right. I love to hear people from England talk. Don't you, Jeff? I sure do. And then um, it was a uh, lady friend of uh, jennifer's and she was from england and i always loved when she'd come over just hearing her talk and i mean it was it was nice to hearing her talk so well you know i could put a tape together for you guys it'll only cost you a couple of hundred dollars but uh yeah i mean i could i could read some poetry and, and <laughs> recite recite some stuff no, I'm, I'm only joking with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you never know. Somebody may buy it. Put it on the eBay and, hey, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It'll be a classic. A yeah, classic. It, it sure would. Hey, yeah, Rob. If somebody can, if somebody can uh, uh, record some raindrops and put it on uh, eBay for sale, then I'm sure you can talk and <laughs> you could sell that. So Yeah. That's right. What kind of metal detectors uh have you used or do you use right now? So, so when I got into metal detecting, I, I got a, a little Ace 250 and, and I bought it for myself for Father's Day and I said, hey, honey, surprise, look what I got. And she just like slapped me upside the head and said, what are you doing? And I said, I've always wanted to do this and I bought myself a metal detector. And uh, so I went out there and I just, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing and and uh, I didn't really want to invest a lot of money just in case I didn't like it. And my mom, who still lives over in England, she's always interested in what I do. I mean, I'll post something on Facebook and um, instant like, you know, I remember when she first got on uh, to Facebook, I had like, 48 notifications. I was like, what's that? And it was my mom liking every picture that I'd put on there. So, <laughs> so she stalks me. She's probably listening right now, so I better be careful, you know. Uh, but she um, she's always interested in the family because there's a, there's a distance, you know, there. And uh, I thought one day, I says, I'm going to start myself a YouTube channel. I'm going to go out every week and... And my mom can see what I'm up to. And so I started January 1st and I went out. You know, it was a, just a small little two, three minute video with the Ace 250. And, and then I, I got in with some other guys in Idaho, who the Desert Rat and Goondog. And they are fantastic. The Desert Rat, he was more of the research guy and, and, um, Goondock is kind of the coin hunter. He just finds coins all the time. And, and they took me to so many new places. So I thought, I'm going to upgrade to the AT Pro. Uh, so I got on the AT Pro, and, and, and that machine did very, very well for me. And, and then I went onto an MX-7 just recently, about two, three months ago. And then I upgraded to the V3i, which I love that machine. It's a little bit complicated, and I'm kind of, I have an engineering mind, but I, it's still, it's, it's a little bit complicated, but I just leave it on coin and jewelry, and I've messed around a little bit off, on some of the settings, and that's a fantastic machine. Yeah, I've seen uh, some of your videos where you uh, were using that uh, V3i white machine, 
And uh, you made the comment, you know, several times that you really did love the machine. I, I got tickled a while ago whenever you said that uh, you had bought yourself a Ace 250 for Father's Day. And uh, I did almost the same thing one time, bought myself something. And uh, so you could say, like I said to your wife, you could say, uh, to Rob, from Rob, with love. <laughs> 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 hey guys we're coming up on a hard break and uh, got a commercial we'll be right back if you want to keep up with what's going on in the metal detecting world then you need to be a subscriber to american digger magazine butch and anita holcomb are the publishers of the magazine and have won awards for three straight years for being the best Digger magazine on the market. American Digger magazine is available in both print and digital formats, so no matter where you live in the world, you can enjoy the latest happenings in the hobby. You can get in touch with American Digger magazine by going to americandigger.com or give them a call at 770 362 8671 and be sure and tell them that you heard it on Relics Radio. You know, some of the uh, sites that you work out there, Rob, all of the uh, ghost, yes. ghost towns and the old mining towns and what have you, you do work in a lot of iron, don't you? Oh, yes. And you know, there's a lot of tin which drives you crazy. It sounds like a good signal and you you're fishing around on that and it's maybe half half an inch round and, and it's just a piece of tin and you're like, ah, oh. but there's a lot of iron as well. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've hunted some of them places, ain't we, Jeff? We sure have. And then of course, uh, one of them was a steamboat captain's house. And unfortunately, <laughs> the only thing we found was tin, but no, we did find some pretty good relics there. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, uh, pull tab, uh, <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> we, uh, we did find a golf ball. I, that was a surface find, but uh, but no, it was we en- we ended up finding a uh, another colonial site after that steamboat captain's house. So you never know what you're going to find. And I did find a watchwinder uh, out from you the did. house. Yeah, uh, yeah. That out, was out in the middle of a thousand acre field. The only relic in miles, <laughs> and then seven finds it. And I mean, it was in great shape. It was just like it was dropped yesterday and i was like well wow. you dog you here i am digging full full tabs and peanuts and golf balls and here he's finding watch winders and stuff like that so but how, that's the way it goes i was proud for it how would you compare uh i'm kind of inter- interested to know because if i work a site if me and jeff work one of those sites that's got just a lot of iron in it we love using the AT Pro. Of course, we've used AT Pro for a long time now. We've both got an Equinox mm-hmm. now, and we really haven't had a chance to. Well, we haven't even hunted together since we both got one. But we've hunted those old iron infested sites with an AT Pro, and uh, it is a hard machine to beat whenever you're working in that iron. But I'm wondering mm-hmm. what you think about the V3i in comparison to the AT Pro in those iron-infested places? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, um, I did a little test on, I think it's like three, four videos ago, and I found some lead, and there was a square nail that I found as well. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm, I had it on coin, coin and jewelry, and I thought, I wonder how this is going to discriminate out that, that iron, you know? And, and so... I went over the nail and it was, you know, about 30 on on the scale there. And then I went over the lead, it was high 70s, 80s. And then I put the nail right next to the, the lead and it didn't even pick up the, lead, uh, the square nail. It just picked the lead up and I even put it on top of the lead and, and I did it. And, you know, because me, I, I love to, a lot of people put claims out there about the machines and, and I love putting that to the test, you know, and, and, and trying it. So I like both machines, and both machines work well. And I just think it's down to preference, you know, and, and budget. You know, it's it's all down to that as well. Yeah, yeah the V3i, it's it's a great machine. I mean, it's it's pretty pricey the last time I seen one. Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, of course, I've yeah. seen a few videos on uh, YouTube about it. And I, I almost bought one before I bought the GPX. And then, of course, I would have mm-hmm. saved money if I'd bought the uh, the whites. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, but it was it seemed like a really good machine. Yeah, and yeah. I've I seen the video where you uh, put the nail there. And the only good test that I've had with uh, my Equinox in that regard, I found a war nickel that had a highly rusted square nail that was as big as almost as big as my little finger laying on top of that uh, uh, war nickel. And I could hear the war nickel. I mean, it was just singing. And, of course, I didn't hear the nail at all. And I dug down, mm-hmm. and it was about six inches deep. And the first thing I seen was that big nail. And, I, th- you know, they'll do that on an AT Pro sometimes. You'll get a good signal yeah. on, on big iron or a, a nail or something other, you know, if it's uh, – of a certain quality or what have you. And I thought, well, that may have been that nail, I guess. And uh, then I went to move the dirt or pick the nail up, and then I looked, and, and the war nickel was laying right under it. And so I was impressed with wow. the with the uh, Equinox doing that. White's, yeah. uh, White sponsored an event that, that y'all were at, Diamondville. Is that where Mark Hoover came? Yes. Is that where he? Yes. Came? Yeah. That's why he came last year, and, and he didn't want to break his his streak this time. He was, I think, he was so scared that he wouldn't find a bottle, so he didn't <laughs> come. <laughs> I'm just joking. I love you, Mark. I'm only joking, but yeah, we we went up there again, and and whites. I, I've been very impressed with them as a company. They actually brought up a prototype machine. Uh, this. Diamondville area is an old gold mine and um, there was a lot of gold pulled out of there and uh, you know it wasn't just a white exclusive event you can bring there was Equinox up there there was MXTs there was AT Pros there was Fishers you know uh, but they brought up this prototype and I was really, it's, an, it's, an, it's a gold machine, and maybe I shouldn't say anything because I signed an NDA, but maybe, uh, maybe I will. But this machine, there was, uh, they found several pieces of gold with it. Wow. Mm. Well, uh, you it, know, I, I, guess it, that, uh, I guess we'll be hearing some stuff about that machine then. Any idea of, uh, of a release date or anything on that? Any, you got any insight on that? Well, from what I understand, it's going to come out in September. And, and, but I, from what I've seen on their website, there's been a, a little leak I don't know if it's by mistake, but I saw it on their website, uh, and it's called the 24K. So uh, I just put in there 24K in their search bar, and and it pulled up the machine, and and it was it's 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 a, it's a good machine, and uh, uh, I'll be posting the video here in about two weeks, and you can see it, and I found my first ever piece of gold with it. Man, congratulations. Is it a uh, pulse machine or is it a VLF? It's a VLF. It's, it's a VLF. And, and, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I have a clue what I was doing. And, uh, a good friend of mine, Jim McCulloch, uh, out of California, he's probably the best gold detectorist that I know. He says, look, come with me bring that machine. <laughs> they, they took three of them up there and he says, bring that machine. So we went over and uh, he says, just start swinging over there. And, and, you know, it took me about 20, 30, maybe about 40 minutes. And then I got a signal, you know, I was scraping down the, the, the dirt and the, and the, the area and, and, you know, and then I finally got a signal and, and I was chasing this thing and then I was chasing it for about 20 minutes. And, and Jim's looking at me, and Steve Howard, the VP of sales, was there, and 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 they're looking at me, laughing, and I'm like, "It's right here." And I, you know, they said, "All right, scoop it with this plastic scoop." And <laughs> I was like, 
it's a cup. It's not a plastic. It's like a cup. So I scoop it up and I says, okay, run it over the, 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 the coil. And there's like nothing there. And then I dump it up. And this thing was on a slope and it was going down the hill. And I didn't know. And I'm following this thing down the hill. And then I says, Jim, please just help me out here. Find that thing for me, will you? <laughs> and uh, so he he patiently, it took him about five minutes, and I, and then he found it. And it was a, it's a teeny little piece of gold, but it is the best piece of gold. I, I just love it. And I was just like, yeah. So oh, you'll oh. see that in a couple of weeks. I'll be posting that in a couple of weeks. Well, that, I can't wait to see it. That's great. So, I, I'm sitting here, uh, I was going to holler at my wife and then uh, see what she thought about me getting a new detector. Well, another detector. So, <laughs> But I, I think I'll let it rest for right now. I don't want to see a murder on uh, Freaker. Yeah, yeah. No. yeah you'll, you'll, be moving, you'll be moving to Idaho with us. I've got a spare bedroom. You're welcome to come over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, hold on a minute. Let me, no, I better not. I'll just wait. <laughs> of course, uh, I, I had a buddy today. He wanted uh, my Macro Racer 2, and we'd been talking on a price and everything, and uh, of course, he traded me a few relics and then uh, gave me some money for the uh, racer too. I mean, it was a it's a great machine. Don't get me wrong, but I, I just wasn't using mm-hmm. it. I bought the Equinox, and uh, so mm-hmm. I could tell her, "Hey, that's a good idea." I could tell her, "Hey, I sold that one where I could get another." <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah, it's like Goondark. He he he. I think he's owned every metal detector on the earth. Um, He's a really good friend of mine, and, and every other month he's got a new detector, and, and he, he hunts with the Equinox 800, but he's got the Macro Racer too with that small coil, and he pulls some good things out with that Macro Racer. Uh, I did too. Uh, we Well, when we hunted the uh, uh, famous construction site, that's that was my main machine there. And of course my AT pro, mm-hmm. it was, it was sick at the time and then, uh, had, uh, had to get it fixed, but I was using that racer too. And I mean, I done real well. I mean, and, and he found stuff, uh, well, we did a test at another construction site that we got to hunt for one day. And, uh, he heard a, uh, a good signal, a brass signal with that racer too. And I had my AT Pro, and he said, come here and see what uh, numbers you get on this, what it sounds like. And I couldn't get it at all. And uh, he said, go get my AT Pro. And his AT Pro did get it at all. But it sounded good on the racer, too, and pulled it up. And it was a uh, it was a, a Civil War uh, eagle button, wasn't it, Jeff? It sure oh. was. Now. Wow. It sure was. Wow. Now, you, now you're making me sick because I just sold the machine. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess I could call him back and tell him. Uh, <laughs> I think the Equinox would would hear that. I, I oh yeah, most definitely. I, it's, it's your. I believe it would. Uh, talking about gold, uh, have you ever panned any, Rob? Well, I actually I was uh, went to a gold show, um, and it was a GPAA gold show, and. Uh, I've never panned before, you know. I mean, last year at our event, we had a lot of gold guys up there, and and one of them pulled the pan out and gave us a little lesson of it. But I was an observer, and we saw a little bit of color in there, but that was it. And so I went to this gold show, and they have this big trench, like full of water, and it's it's huge. It's probably like twenty feet by six feet, all the way around, and and. They give you a pan and you just go in there, black sand, and they teach you how to. And I had so much fun, and I learned so much stuff, uh, and and I got a little bit of color, and and you know they teach you how to move it, and and you get the sniffer bottle. Well, you're supposed to put some water in this thing, and <laughs> and then like, and then you you squirt it out, and then you suck it in. Well, I was squirting the gold everywhere, so <laughs> but by the <laughs> by the end of it I, I finally got the hang of it but it's addictive i was there about an hour and you're only supposed to be there about 10 minutes but i think because i'm english they were scared of me um, <laughs> <laughs> they were like he, he's from somewhere else we don't need to mess with him no. <laughs> yeah, he talks he talks funny and looks funny so don't bother him 
but yeah, it, it's kind of the we've got a saying around uh, our parts here. You know, we'll say you're not from around here. That's what they were saying. They were afraid to tell you to go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> uh, me and Jeff. <laughs> Me and Jeff got in the creek uh, last week and did a little bit of gold prospecting, didn't we, Jeff? Kind of a change of pace. Yeah, and had a great time. And uh, we did find a little bit of gold. I mean, not enough to make us rich, but we did find a little bit. And, uh, of course, actually, the best thing, we found a good, uh, it was a uh, grist mill. And uh, we found the foundation of it while we were in the creek. And so we're, I'm looking forward to going back to detect that spot. But, yeah, we... Yeah. We did find a little bit of gold, and then uh, Seven, he'd already uh, went a couple of times before I could get up there and go with him, and of course, he went out and bought a uh, uh, sluice, and of course, he was all into it, found his first piece of gold before I was there, and I was like, man, I got to get up there nice. in this creek with him, and so we we really had uh, a good time. Hey, guys, we got a call around. Swansea, what's going on tonight? Hey, Loy and Jeff, how are you guys? We're Hello, great. Swan. I got a couple of questions for Rob. First off, Rob, I wanted to say you've been a great guest, and I wanted to tell you that I have a hell of a time still with those little snuffer bottles trying to get the gold out of the gold pan while there's still water in there. I swear to God, it shoots out more than it sucks in. <laughs> yes. I've, I think I've tried three different ones, and win. I swear to God it was me. <laughs> And, you know, try and do like an Englishman with it, too. I mean, we don't have gold over there like that, you know, so it's 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 very confusing. Y'all don't need gold yeah. over there. you got hammered Cohen's, don't they, Swansea? They don't need any gold. <laughs> that, that's where the second half of this was coming in. And now he's in the United States, and I'm fortunate enough to live in – I live in New England, Rob, so I've got the oldest stuff in the country that I can dig out of the ground. Do you – I mean, have you pulled out a 1700s coin in the United States, picked it up and said, yeah, there's no reason to keep this and toss it back in the bushes? I mean, what do you do when you find <laughs> our relics? It, it's got to be pretty disappointing. <laughs> well, I was just speaking with Seven and Jeff earlier. You know, I'm I'm new to the history of America, and I love it. And, and you know, if you watch my videos, a lot of people watch it, and they're like, oh, he's getting excited over a horseshoe. That doesn't, I mean, I just love digging that history, you know, and, and, and oxen shoe. They're pretty rare in Idaho. You know, there's not a lot of those over there. But believe it or not, I've never found an 1800s or older coin. And that's my goal this year is to, to find an 1800s coin. I found a 1905 Indian head penny. But I, I, I just find a lot of relics, and, and I, just, I just love that. Well, y'all do. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to fit in. I, I didn't understand a word you said because you said it in English, but not in American. <laughs> but eventually, oh, being that you live in the Midwest, you'll pick up the accent eventually. And I can't wait to hear a Midwest accent done with an English accent combination. That's going to be amusing. Oh, that is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, maybe well, I should put dude on the end of that. Maybe that maybe no. <laughs> dude. Yeah, we'll have to have you back on uh, an anniversary show a year from this date right here. And, and uh, Swansea, we'll see if that accent's changed any. You're going to have to make sure you post that everywhere on Facebook because I'm going to have to listen to that one. There's, there's got to be some change from this proper English thing that we don't know of in the United States. He's going to get rid of, st of using real words and go to the, uh, the American slang words eventually. He hasn't done it yet because I haven't heard him say anything American yet. <laughs> Eventually he'll get there, but uh, I, I want also to see on video the first time he finds his 1800s coin or the 1700s coin, and you might have to make a trip with Loy and, and Jeff to come up into New England and do this. It's it's going to mm -hmm. have to uh, change your mind on what you think of relics and, and what you find in the United States, but I love the fact that you're passionate about the United States history being in this country. I love listening to you talk on the radio, and I wish you the best of luck. Thanks, brother. Hey, thanks, Swansea. Appreciate yep, the call. Sure do. And I knew that everybody was going to love uh, to hear you talk tonight, Rob. I sure did. Hey, guys, we uh, are coming up here on another hard break, and uh, we need to run another commercial, if I can get it up here. And uh, we will be right back. If your passion is metal detecting, then you know how much your success is based on the equipment you use. 
Let my buddy Tim Henderson of Murray Branch Outdoors in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, help you with that. Tim is an authorized dealer of Garrett, XP Deus, Tesoro, and Macro Detectors and Supplies, and he is now an authorized dealer for Mine Lab. So, if you're looking to get your hands on the new Equinox 600 or 800, then Tim is your guy. Murray Branch Outdoors is not only competitive in their prices, but the service after the sale is second to none. Tim not only sells detectors, he uses them, and so he can answer any questions you might have. Murray Branch Outdoors also deals in used detectors, and he'll take your old detector in on trade when you decide to upgrade. So give Tim of Murray Branch Outdoors a call at 615-948-4611, and be sure and tell him Relics Radio sent you. And hey guys, we got another caller on. Uh, Last numbers are 2800. Who we got and what's your question? Mr. Lloyd, this is Joe Davidson. How you doing? Hey, Okie, what's going on? Oh, nothing, man. Just living the dream, buddy. (laughs) Same as you. (laughs) How's life treating you? Oh, it's treating me good. I was going to get to because I know that you hunted with uh, uh, Spud Digger here. Uh, Tell us about that. Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was just uh, listening to him talking about how excited he gets on a horseshoe, and that's uh, that's kind of how we got to know each other and uh, ended up hunting together. Is man, I'd watch his videos when he first started. And I remember him digging up a big old hubcap, and man, I never seen anybody. I mean, I, you know me, you know, you and I've hunted together, and I get crazy excited about stuff when uh, anything. But uh, man, Rob is uh, super passionate about about digging, and it's a uh, it's a lot of fun hunting with him. I. Uh, I remember uh, over at Diamondville, it was the second time we hunted over there together. Uh, I, we were on each side of a canyon. I don't know if you remember this, Rob. I do. Uh, okay. Uh, so we were on the back side of this big, deep canyon, and uh, I, I'm probably, what, 100 and, 150 yards away from him at least. I'm on the other side of the canyon up on a big hill, and it's the thickest, nastiest brush that uh, that you could ever ever swing in and and I just kept hearing Rob, and I can't imitate your accent. I'm sorry, man. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I just kept hearing says, I got another button. I got another button. And he dug in that hole. I, I don't know, man. You dug in there at least an hour, just button after button after suspender clip. And, man, I never seen yeah. anybody have so much fun. Well, well you know, talking anyway. about uh, Diamond Fiddle with uh, Orky there. I'm not inviting anybody else up to Diamondville until I find a coin, a token. <laughs> now, I found Chinese coins up there. I have found the most Chinese coins up there. I've, I've got to brag about that. But Oki comes up, and he's swinging his fancy dais, and he's like, <laughs> look at me. And he's up on this area, and he says, hey, I've just found a, a, a token. Hey, I've just... And he finds all this stuff, and then he slips down some pine needles and loses one of the tokens while we were all laughing, right? And he tells us where it is. And then we have our event, and I tell all the guys, look, Oki was out here. He lost his token. He thinks it's over there. Please find it. I put it. a bounty he on said that. You... Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. And he says, if anybody finds it, they can keep it. I just want it found. And it was a pretty old token from Idaho City. And and uh, then he comes out again. And he found, he finds, not found, I was speaking American there, he finds. <laughs> <laughs> he, See, I'm rubbing off. And... <laughs> you are, Jeff. He finds his token that he loses. And I have this little honey hole that I go to. So I take Oki over there, and I take him. I says, look, this is, my, uh, this is my honey hole. When I'm getting a little bit frustrated with the tin and all them, I come over here, and I'll find a Chinese coin. I'll find a suspender clasp. Well, he walks up, and a swing, he pulls out like a really ornate brooch that is just beautiful with silver and some kind of stone thing. And I'm just like, Get away from my honey hole. <laughs> <laughs> you remember on, that, man. Joe? <laughs> oh, dude, I, I remember that. 
that's uh it's definitely one of my uh favorite hunts of all time man i i got i got all my finds from diamondville on a display case and i look at it all the time man i uh i i love that was, that was some good times that was uh definitely the best hunting that i've had and you know one of my best favorite hunts in the last year definitely and yeah I, and i've I seen i've seen on one of your videos rob you were in that area and you were talking about you said now there was uh Oki's hot spot right over there you know <laughs> and you were pointing it out <laughs> yeah. yeah oh i i told him yeah we, we we took the rakes after that place and uh we raked about a foot we were at least a foot of pine needles it seemed like mm-hmm. off that spot and I, I i i challenged rob before uh that last event that he had i said man if you find a if you find a coin in there i'll give you a 20 dollar bill and uh i no, i found a rusty old nail <laughs> Yeah, but no, we we pounded that soft spot pretty good. That's a that was a great spot that you have there. And for all the listeners, you know, we're joking that Rob is not a redneck, but uh, you know, they used a little bit of redneck ingenuity because they found an old one of the old flat mops that had uh, you know it's not a mop like with all the uh, strings hanging off of it. It's it's like one of the little waxing mops that had a rag or something on it, and y'all was using that scraping the ground, wasn't you? Oh, I was man. actually I, I found this uh, magnet from Home Depot, and it, it, it almost looks like a squeegee that you put on your car. And I put a because um, there's so much tin up there, and I put a microfiber cloth around it. And you know, I would just kind of like freestyle where I just have my pin pointer, and I'd have that thing, and I'd scrape it over, and I'd get the tin stuck to it, and I'd get my pin pointer in a little bit, and you know, get something big, and then. Oh, this is cool, and then I'd scrape it again, and all the uh, all the iron and the, the tin would stick to it, and then it's very easy to brush it off with with uh, the microfiber cloth on there. Yeah, yeah. And talking about tokens, Joe never had found any tokens before he went to Idaho, had you, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, uh, you know it, that that kind of goes back to when I first detected. I mean, that's that was my first find that I ever made was an Indian Territory token, and uh, that was back when I was in junior high. And I've been addicted to tokens ever since. I, I'd rather find a token than anything else. I've got a Washington tax token on my uh, relic case that you found. That you gave me whenever you and uh, J.L. Digger came to uh, Kentucky and hunted with me, and uh, you know I love I love tokens, but I I'd say you're the token king on uh, especially the Washington State tax tokens. Well, come on up here to Washington. That you find about as many of them as you find uh, pull tabs almost. I mean, them <laughs> them tax tokens Man. are everywhere. Yeah, it's a. I, I think uh, any. Any person that hunts in this state, I, I wouldn't doubt that they find twenty five a year at least. I mean, they're wow. this state's loaded with them tax tokens. Hey, both but, of you guys, right, well, both of you guys uh, at Diamondville are those places that y'all are hunting out there. Is elevation a problem f- with fatigue and stuff like that with the elevation? <laughs> no, it's just your belly. Just your belly. Yeah, yeah, that's my belly. (laughs) (laughs) Just your belly. That's the problem. It gets in the way of walking up the hills. (laughs) Well, we're out of luck, Seven. (laughs) I know it. (laughs) We're not. We're not quite. We're not quite wide pride yet, but we're getting in that area, you know. Yeah, we're Uh, trying to grow up and be like them. Yeah, uh, we're talking about. uh, Heath Jones and Butch Holcomb, uh, they just got some shirts made wide pride on the front and on the back. It says, uh, we're kind of a big deal. And, uh, Heath and them had a show the other night. And if you called in, you got a, uh, you got a t-shirt cause, uh, Ken and Mark Guthrie, uh, are making shirts for them and going to make shirts for us. And, uh, so I, I called in and, and there was a debacle, Jeff. I don't even know if you know about it, but I had been recording some stuff up here and had my board switched a little bit and I couldn't hear anything through the headphones. And I was talking and I was going, break, break, uh, test, test. What's the matter with this thing? And it's all coming out on their show and I couldn't hear. Them. <laughs> and so then I had to, uh, I had to log in to History Seekers and pull their audio off and fix all that and put it back on. <laughs> Heath was about to kill me, but I got my shirt anyway. 
<laughs> oh, that would have made the show. That would have been hilarious. I would have just left. Oh yeah, that. they called you an honorary member, didn't they? Well, yeah, yeah. They they. Uh, you're the, an honorary member of the Wide Pride. Hey, I'm an honorary <laughs> member of the Wide Pride. Yes, I am. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, uh, I, can, I can get off here and let you guys get on the show. I just wanted to call and say hi to Rob and you. And hey, Jeff, I haven't met you yet, but uh, maybe someday. Oh yeah. Hey, yo, Joe, good to hear from you. Uh, Joe, used yeah, to call, sure. Joe used to call me, Rob, when he'd get in a traffic jam. <laughs> phone phone would <laughs> ring during the day, and and uh, it would be Joe, and, and he'd say, I'm stuck in traffic here, and I just thought I'd call you and catch up and see what's going on. So <laughs> traffic must be flowing pretty good because I hadn't heard from you for a no, while. No, it's but. not. It's getting worse. I, I need to call you up in that next <laughs> traffic jam probably tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Uh, I'll be stuck in it again. Well, but I uh, need to call you and catch up. Yeah, yeah, you do. And good to hear from you. Uh, I talk to uh, yeah. I talk to JL Digger every now and then. Uh, not much, but uh, looking forward to all of us getting back together sometime. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm shooting for uh, CWPPO in October, so that's, well, uh, that's my goal anyway. That's what uh, me and Jeff are talking about is CWPPO. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll cool. uh, maybe we'll all hook up up there and. And uh, get some of those Ohio people. Find some of them Ohio Wheaties that they find up there, those large scents. Boy, I tell yeah. you, them, uh, them Ohio Wheaties are everywhere. I, I've never seen such a place. <laughs> we ne- yeah, and we need to go up there and congratulate the new married couple. That's so. right. That's right. Evan and yeah. uh, and Sam got married and had a metal detector wedding, and that was special. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> and I, I don't know if you all have heard this or not, but there was somebody that uh that came up that didn't want anybody metal detecting and almost crashed that wedding party because they thought that they were all out there metal detecting no kidding <laughs> that's the story that. that i got i uh you know if if there's some of y'all out there that know more about it or something other you can call <laughs> in and and fill us in and and uh yeah uh but good to talk to you joe and we appreciate the yeah, call. It was good talking to you i enjoy yeah. the show every week and keep up good work guys and Rob, I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Okay. Right. Okay, Thank you very much, Joe. All, right. All right, bye, guys. And Mark Hoover, you need to call in. This is uh, this is your catch here, and I know that Rob would love to hear from you, wouldn't you, Rob? I would love to talk to Mark again. It would be great. Mark's a good talker. Uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, metal detecting at the wedding. Of course, uh, Jennifer and I, we got married at... Uh, uh, it was a local house here. It's called the Craig Font, and uh, it's a historical home built in uh, early 1800s. It survived the Civil War and everything, and it's a state property now. And, of course, the guy that uh, oversees it, he was like, uh, well, yeah, you can metal detect anytime you want to. And I don't really think he knew the laws very well, so I was like, well... And I was going to bring out the metal detector during our wedding, and I was like, man, I better not. I don't want a felony during my wedding night. So <laughs> I, just, I just left it in the trucks. So. Hey, guys, Mark Hoover is in the house. What's going on, Mark? Hey, Lloyd. Hey, Jeff. And hey, Hello, Rob. Hello, Mark. And, my brother. And Denny is hey, in the house, brother. too. So we got everybody on. <laughs> well, hello. <laughs> Bye, Larry. Well, y'all. I, look, I. Go ahead, hey, Mark. Danny, it's good to hear you as well. Well, I was just going to say, uh, since Rob, since I'm Rob's agent, I just want to make sure you guys are taking good care of him. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're in trouble, uh, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Did he okay no, this I, through you, Mark? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really thrilled that you guys got uh, Rob on there. You know, uh, I did get a chance to go out there last year, not this year. And it was killing me not to be able to go. And I hope to go back at some point in the future, but it is an absolutely wonderful place to hunt. Uh, and, and especially hunting with Rob and all the guys that come out and the folks that, that, that do that. Um, I just had an absolutely delightful time and, and, and Rob and, and the crew that he hunts with, uh, are so gracious. And, uh, when we went out there, they brought a camper out and they cooked some of the best food you've ever eaten. And we just had a great time of fellowship and uh, and uh, and digging all the way around. So, Rob, uh, kudos to you. You are uh, an amazing uh, ambassador for the hobby. So I just want to tell you how much I appreciate 
getting to know you a little bit, and uh, I do consider you a brother, and I hope we uh, continue that friendship for a very long time. Thanks, brother. Thank you very much. Man, that's great. That's great. That's really great. And then uh, I'm ready to go detecting uh, Mark mentioned food. <laughs> and it sounded like it was it was really good. So, and I'd say they had all, I'd say they had all kind of potatoes up there in Idaho too. What's going on with you tonight, Denny? Oh, I was just reading the chat here. Jesse Rogers, Rogers wanted to know if uh, you're a redneck if you got a metal detector in your truck. I said, well, at the wedding, we all metal detected, and we all had them in our trucks. And, in fact, the bride and groom had the metal detect up their rings. Their rings were buried. That's right. If, if you watch the videos on YouTube or on Facebook, uh, there's several of them on there, and uh, they show them digging them up. Pretty, it was a great wedding. God blessed us at that moment, and it did not rain. After that, Katie bar the door. <laughs> <laughs> well, fill, fill us in on the story. Was there a, a gainsayer that came in and uh, and threw a fuss over all that? Well, it's sort of. Uh, what happened is we were out hunting this old school in a very old state-owned property. Now, the school, I, I gather, was not on that property. And Sam had, who was the bride, had uh, Sam Walters, had permission to hunt there. So, uh, And she got permission for the rest of us to hunt there. And I'm thinking, boy, this is real near state property. I'm not even sure we're supposed to be here, but we were out there digging up stuff. And a Civil War cavalry button was actually found in that schoolyard. It was, it was a cuff button. It was pretty cool. So there were a lot of things found out there, <laughs> but just when we were getting ready for the wedding, somebody rolls up in a, I don't know, golf cart or something rather, and there was a lady in there, and that stopped the metal detecting in that yard for the rest of the day, <laughs> and for for the rest of the three days, in fact. So that's what happened, as far as I know. Well, I I had heard something like that. Yeah. It, it was just a kind of a misunderstanding, and uh, and it was it was the proper thing to do. I, I didn't feel right to be even digging in that area. It looked like a golf course out there, but uh, I in all reality, all the people we had digging out there, you could not see a spot where anybody dug. They did a very professional job of digging, so I was very happy with uh, everyone that metal detected that area. Yeah, that's great. That is good. Yep. Well, I just had to throw that in. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, Rob, do you ever use a probe out west in Idaho? Uh, Only when I go through the TSA. (laughs) (laughs) How do you get that? He said only when he goes goes through the TSA whenever they are, when they're checking him for weapons and stuff. (laughs) No, uh, uh... do you ever hunt well, I, uh, cavalry camps out there, Rob? You know, I've heard there's quite a few out here, and um, you know, you know, not known much about the American history. I've really relied on the desert rats. He, uh, and some sometimes he'll take us out, and there's just a piece of dirt with a, a kind of a ring around it, and we're like, I don't think <laughs> this is it. And then sometimes he takes us, and there's some fantastic things but i was able to get uh this permission i i do a little bit of swimming and uh, a buddy that i swim with he owns the property and he's like and i was having lunch with him and and he says oh i says yeah i'm metal detector a little bit he says oh yeah we have a gold mine just casual you know <laughs> yeah we have a gold mine there's about two thousand people lived up there back from the 1860s and my eyes are like i see like looked at me because my eyes are like wide open and, and i was like well do you think we could go up they said yeah i'll give you a key you go up anytime you want and it's like an hour and a half away and we're just like okay so we haven't really left anywhere else but i'd love to find just some just like the history is 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 really captivating for me and 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 just wondering where it came from and and who used it and what's their life story and 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 how did it come about being in the middle of this field you know i mean there's nothing around and 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 then you just pull out some 
some interesting find. It's just it's it's a fantastic hobby. You well, know, I know for a fact that Idaho, and that's where you're hunting. There were cavalry yes. camps, and there were gold coins found at those cavalry camps, probably from George, uh, Georgia gold coins because it was early in the gold coin era. So that would be really? the Honga, I forget what that's called in Georgia. That's where the first gold coins were minted in the United States, not out in Colorado and wherever, California. So, uh-huh. yep. and, and you know, guys. I, I do know there were a lot of gold coins found in Idaho. And that'd be great to come up on one of them. But it, isn't it refreshing to hear an outsider, someone from England that has come to our country <laughs> and is so passionate about our history and yet we have so many people that live in our country that could care less about our history. I don't know about y'all, but it's just refreshing to me. Yeah, that, sure that's is. very true. Well, you know, this hobby does it to you. When I was in high school history, I couldn't care less about history. And when I got my first, actually, uh, Fisher 1266, then I was hunting for nails and horseshoes, Rob, and logs. <laughs> Yay! Mill. Yeah, we had a sawmill here, and we looked for guys that would throw a horseshoe in the, in the crotch of a tree. So and then they'd bring it in to us, and so rather than uh, messing up about 30 teeth that cost $35 each, I bought a metal detector to find those items. So, And we found horseshoes and bullets and and you name it. So, yeah. Wow. So that's how I got well, into history, and, uh, and the more, and I think... And, and, you know, the younger people are, are getting into the hobby, and I'm so glad to see that. And I think the history is going to go on from there. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, that's well, right. if I that's, could maybe – go ahead, Rob. If I could just do a little segue there. Um, you know, I came over here as a English citizen, and, and you know, I married an American, and, you know, I mean, she's okay for being an American. And uh, uh, we uh, – that was a joke, by the way. Just let you know, honey, if you're, li- <laughs> if you're, if you're listening. Um, but you know, and and I really c- thought about becoming a citizen, and you know, before I did, you know, because that's an important step to become a citizen of another country. I went to Boston, and and I did the Freedom Trail, and I I really looked at the history of the place, and went over to um, Williams Williamsburg, and. And, you know, all that area. And I spent a lot of time back east just looking at the history and, and, and to feel what the colonials went through, you know, and to, to feel the passion for the country, you know. And, and I became a citizen after that. And, and I, I, really, I really wish that people don't take the citizenship of, of the country we live in for granted because it's a, it's a very important thing. You know, that's exactly right, because I have a good friend, and she she was a Canadian, and then she became a citizen of the United States. And, of course, I, I knew her when she was doing this. She was going through, uh, like, the test and stuff, and she knew more about our history than, I mean, my kids did that were going to school here in the United mm-hmm. States. So, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it helps out, like, you have... Uh, these people coming over from other countries and they will know more about our history than other people. So, you know, Rob, where you were at at um, Williamsburg, if you'd have went north, uh, maybe 15 miles from there, there's a town called West Point, and that's not where the, the academy's at. And that's where, uh, ah, the Indian, who am I trying to think of, boy? Pocahontas. Uh, Pocahontas was from and who was the captain smith came uh-huh. across from england and that's it was real close to williamsburg that's where they landed at pocahontas yeah. i think pretty sure that was pocahontas and captain smith yeah. they got married or wanted to get married or something so that's your neck of the woods rob <laughs> yeah. yeah that's awesome i live in boise idaho part- now so so it's kind of a little bit further it's more loose and clock over here than Captain Smith, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, where we hunted at, that uh, guy invited us up to his house. I found him on the Internet, and he invited us to his house, and they had a Calvary, they had a uh, Civil War camp there, and my buddy found a spur, a uh, Richmond spur in the yard, 
And I, I just went to the firing range. I had a firing range, and we found three ringers just on a hillside, and not not that far from where you were at. It's pretty cool. Wow. Williamsburg is really cool. If anybody ever goes there, you want to go from Richmond and take the old river road and go south. And there's so many uh, uh, great big uh, mansions from the Civil War still standing. It's great. Tra- Don't take the highway. Take the back roads. Best way to go down to Williamsburg. And that's one thing. Like uh, when we go to Virginia, I just like to get out and ride back roads. And you see a lot of uh, old homesteads that's still standing, and a lot of old mills. And I mean, it's you don't see a lot of that here in Tennessee. I mean, riding the old back roads is a yeah, pretty good thing. There's a lot of history in Virginia. There's no doubt about it. I tell you, hey Mark, but you know, every time I go over a creek or a river. On a bridge in Tennessee, I always look, I always think if I lived there, I'd be checking all four corners of that bridge or on the land and find where the picket posts were at. And there was one, there was at least one or two at every bridge. So, man, if I was in Tennessee, that's where I'd be hunting. <laughs> yeah. If you can get on them sometimes, that's the deal. Uh, well, it just takes a lot of leg work, you know. Yeah, yeah that's right. Hey Mark, you're in life. No, it's not. You're still on, uh, and I wanted to ask you about uh, what your impressions were of uh, Diamondville whenever you went. You talking well, to me? Well, boy, I no, I was talking. Ahead. I was talking uh, to Mark. Asking. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. So, hey, hey, hey Denny. Uh, yeah. So, uh, well, Diamondville. You know, I did the research too, and. What was interesting, uh, Rob mentioned that bottle uh, that I found, and of course it is one of my favorite finds that I tell people about. And what was interesting about Diamondville, there were thousands of people in that area back in the uh, late 1800s because of the gold mining. And then uh, there was a fire that went through there. Rob, you can correct me. I want to say it was in the early 1930s, and it burned down the entire town. And mm-hmm. so for anything to survive, we would find pieces of glass that were actually melted, and you could tell were melted from the fire. So some of these bottles that survived that Rob found and that I found, um, you know, were able to either be buried or covered up and were not destroyed by the fire. And I don't think there's probably more than uh, maybe 50 people that live in the nearest town but I'll tell you, that is one of the coolest places to hunt. There's an old, uh, there was an old school there. There was an old uh, one-room hospital. Uh, I, I've got pictures of it. There's a, there's a, a, a bed uh, with a, a bed frame with a tree growing through it. Um, I actually found pieces of an old uh, stove, and some of them were so heavy I couldn't bring them back. So I took certain pieces and brought them back with me. I even found a gold miner's uh, pick, and it was so heavy I couldn't bring it back with me, so I gave it to my hunting buddy that I was hunting with that day. And I sometimes I regret not bringing it back, but I'm really glad he got it. But I will tell you that I consider myself blessed to be invited to go out there, and I definitely want to go back. And, Rob, I'm going to tell you something right now. You don't know this, but I just got invited to a 340-acre gold mine, old gold mine in Montana, and you're welcome to come with us if we go. I think I'll I'm going to have to get one of those white machines. <laughs> 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 one of the 24Ks? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, when we're looking, yeah, well, I'll, I'll certainly reach out to you, but uh, one a similar story to you, I was talking to a friend of mine, and, he knows about metal detecting or knows about my adventures. And he said, Oh, by the way, uh, I'm a partner in a 340 acre property up in Montana that used to be an old gold mine back in the early 1900s. Uh, you want to come metal detect it? And I said, uh, you won't have to ask me twice. <laughs> yeah. That's automatic. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hey, Rob, with, uh, and- with your love of American history and it, it really is different because a lot of metal detectorists, like you said, all they're interested in is coins. And uh, even us relic hunters, you know, we get a little bit selective sometimes. 
uh, about what we find. We want to find the better stuff and everything. So I think it'd be an interesting question to ask you. What is the what is your favorite relic that you've ever found in the country here? Oh, so I'm just going to go off the last Diamondville trip. If I could just share, the videos are going to come. I'm a little bit behind on posting my videos, and um, so you're going to have next about two weeks that where I find that gold piece, and then I find this stone that looks like a doorknob. And I was like, I was, I've was, i got a signal and it ran up, you know, in the brass area, you know, 55, 60. And I thought, that's probably casing. And, and I'm digging, I'm digging. And I pull this thing out. And it's a stone. And it's beautiful. And it is like, it is like the nicest doorknob I've ever seen. It's got a little bit of brass inside of the, door novel and you'll see that in a couple of weeks on the video and it is like wow and 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 that was my favorite find and then i'm there's a guy from seattle called james who oh i tell you he finds a period token from that diamond we call it diamond build to prevent to protect the site um, because, you know, we don't like sharing our permissions, right? Even though I share it with 30, 40 people at a time. <laughs> um, and, and he finds a token. And from what we gather, there's only three that have ever been found that we think of. But when we were looking, we think it's the only one that we've, that's been found. And that'll be out in about a month, that video. And so we have a contest. Oh, and this is one thing. Uh, if I could share, if I could, there's a, uh, and this, there's a, uh, a lady called Lady Blumen. She's part of the Spud Digger group and, uh, and the Fennec Fox and the Red Badger. Those three guys are just fantastic. But this lady goes over to this own, the old rock house and they're digging in the scraping and she finds an 1852 large scent. Wow. With an ace 250. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that's, that's good. That is really. a great pattern. And here I am with it. I'm with my MXT. I'm getting, I've gotten an MXT as well, and I've got a V3I, and I'm swinging, and I'm finding doorknob, which I love. <laughs> and then these guys are, hey, look at this token. I was like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Look at this 1852. <laughs> hey, I, Rob. I, it was fantastic. Rob, with my Ace 250 in 2006, I found over 4,000 clad coins and 300 silver coins and a six-pound cannonball. With an ace what? Two. So, AT Pros, you ain't got nothing on an Ace 250. You just got to learn your machine. <laughs> I could I could tell you one time what a silver dime, if I dug a silver dime, I could tell you it was a silver dime from a clad dime with an uh, Ace 250. It's just all uh, about learning your machine. There's no doubt that, about that's it. That's exactly. It and learning the sounds. Not worry about the, the meter, just learn the sounds. Yep. Yes, and that's the key is the sounds. You know, yep. I get a little bit uh, I'm not upset, but you know, I, I, a lot of people will, that don't give their metal detector a chance. You know, I mean, you like take your time, slow it down, learn learn the machine, and just give it a chance. Don't oh, this this isn't finding anything. I'm going to go get me an X Y Z on ABC. Let's okay. just give it a chance. Uh, there's a lot of good machines out there, and uh, just give them a chance. And that is good advice. You need to learn your machine and just slow down. Uh, there's not a better, uh, you know, tip that you can give a newcomer than to slow down, keep that coil on the ground, move it slow, listen to the sounds. And, uh, you know, a lot of times don't worry about what the meter says. I have dug a lot of good stuff, and Jeff has too, that meter-wise didn't look good. In fact, one of my uh, cut reals on an AT Pro, rang up a 35, and you know that that's down, getting close down into the nail range. Uh, but mm -hmm. it, it was just the way it was laying. It was a cut real. 
Uh, it had some iron around it and everything, but I could I could hear that good repeatable signal. It was a thirty five, but I dug it anyway, you know. So, yeah, give them a chance. See what see what the machine's telling you. That's what it takes. I mean, my first Civil War belt buckle, it sounded like a big piece of iron, and of course there were so many square nails around it, and of course it was kind of masking it, and of course it sounded terrible. But I dug it anyway, and it turned out to be a good find. You know, I like the ones that sound like a bullet, Jeff. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I dug enough square nails to build everybody in here a house. <laughs> I have to. you both. Yeah. I have to. Hey, uh, Dig and Chick wanted to know if Rob could dig any place on the planet, where would it be? Mm. Well, last I dug with Mark Hoover in Montana. Um. Oh, it, it's got to be, it's got to be England, you know, it, uh, Ireland. I've, I, I lived in Ireland for a couple of years, um, but I think I'd love to go back to the to the home country and and just 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 find find some some uh, a hammered coin would be lovely, but just find some some stuff, you know. To me, it's not it's not about what I find; it's who I'm with. And it's it's the adventure, and it's the it's the friendships, and it's the it's just getting out and just having a good laugh, you know, and 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 just yeah, you find some cool things, and it's great, but you know, it's it's just the whole community that I love. That was Diggin Canuck that asked that. I guess it's it's a Canadian, a eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey. maybe hey. Ca- maybe Canada as well. Beautiful yep. place. Montreal is beautiful. Yeah. And we I think had Rob uh, wants to come to Florida. Go ahead. I was just going to say I think Rob really wants to come to Florida to to hunt up with us over down in Florida, dig the alligators. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I, I'm going to have to drop, but hey, it was great uh, talking with you, Rob. It's great to hear your voice. I look forward to seeing you. And Danny, good to hear you as well. And Loy and Jeff, thank you very much. Great, another great show, and I uh, look forward to talking with you guys again. Well, hey, thank Mark. You, Mark. Thanks again, brother. Hey, Mark, thank you so uh, much. Uh, uh, Mark has been our booking agent. He has got us some really, really good guests, and uh, you know, uh, we're booked up right now, Mark, to the 1st of August or the 2nd of August. And so uh, you need to get your nose to the grindstone and, and find us another good one. Uh, you got a winner here tonight again, and we certainly do appreciate you and and uh, the friends that you have that you have helped bring on to the show. They've made the show. I sure have. Yeah. Rob, I had a question. Um, how easy do you think it's going to be when you go back uh, to England to get permission in these spots to dig. Oh, well, I'm going to share a story that's not related to metal detecting. And, um, and then you'll understand my answer after that. So uh, I married my wife and, um, several years later, we went over with two of our daughters and, um, I had this Marriott vacation thing and, 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 and we had three nights right on the river Thames in the, the nicest hotel and it's right near the London eye. It's a Marriott right there. And, and we get the red eye, we get off the plane, we go in the hotel and we say, Oh, Oh yes. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you're all posh, you know, and I'm just like tired and I've got kids. One's young and one's six. And, and, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, your room won't be ready for several hours. So we walk around and I go back in and, and, and and the lady says, yes, your room's still not ready. I says, oh, can you hurry up, man? I'm bloody knackered. Like that, right? And and my English came out and she looked at me and she says, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Newcastle. She said, oh, I thought you were American. We'll have your room ready in 20 minutes. So, <laughs> so, so the bad thing is, is when I go over to England, I sound American. So they're going to probably think I'm some crazy American coming over there looking for all the gold. So mm-hmm. I'm probably not going to get any permissions. But when I'm over here in America, I sound like I'm 
not American, so I'm a, a man without a country. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a hard time of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Great story, I tell you. You won't have any problem. Uh, you come into our neck of the woods, everybody would just fall in love with you, I tell you, wouldn't they, Jeff? Oh, yeah, they sure would. All they do is just talk. And then, can you talk while you metal detect? And you can metal detect anywhere you want to. I can just be like, boy, he, he used to be a sheriff and then, uh, well, sheriff's deputy. And then, of course, that's where he gets all his permissions from, from being a cop. So you'd be, you'd have yeah. more permissions than he does. <laughs> I can just see uh, Rob there with Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone has got a, uh, he's got an old farm that's got a lot of colonial uh, relics on it, and he is just a great guy. Uh, he's bush hogged places for us where we thought that would be a good place to hunt and, and he'll come out and hunt with us. And, and he'll just, anytime that we hunt there, if you listen to our videos, you'll hear him talking in the background. And I just know that you and him would hit it off so well. Oh, they sure would. Uh, even well, Will Johnson, when he come down, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Stone told him, of course, uh, Mr. Stone, he, he has the knack. He knows if you're a good person or not. I mean, he can tell and a lot of people can, but, uh, a good, great buddy of ours from California, Will Johnson, he come down and hunted with uh, seven and I, and he even, uh, Mr. Stone told him, said, well, when you come back, bring your wife and you can stay in the, uh, old home here. And of course it's, it's a real nice home. I mean, it's, uh, it was built in 1839, and, I mean, it's still kept up, and, I mean, it's just like a vacation home for uh, him and his family, so, but he letting them stay there on the property, and, I mean, he's a real great guy. He, wow. sure, he sure is. There's no doubt about it. Hey, Rob. Sounds like a beautiful place. Oh, it is, and it's a wonderful place to hunt, and uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, Mr. Stone as a friend of ours, and uh, to have that permission, there's no doubt about it. Very, very fortunate to be able to hunt there. What one tip would you give to new people that are getting into the hobby now? Ooh. So I'm just going to share my experience, how I got into it, and maybe pull a tip from that. So I did a lot of research. I watched a lot of YouTube videos and then I looked at my budget. Uh, I think sometimes we get a little bit carried away with the people with the very expensive machines. And, you know, um, and I looked at my budget and I just set a budget. And then I found a place that I bought it from. And, and that's it. So the tip I would do is just, uh, just, just set a budget and do your research. Just kind of keep it easy. At first, until keep it easy, yeah. yeah, and then, and then dig every signal. You know, I think sometimes we just want to. We watch these people, and there's a lot of people who who are out there pulling out silvers right, left, and center, and and sixteen hundreds this and colonial this, and I'm just like, oh, I just found a wheat back, you know, and and <laughs> you know, and 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 I found twenty seven ring poles, you know, and I think. You, you've got to dig every signal to know how your, your machine reacts. And and as the, the chap said earlier, he knew the difference between a regular dime and a silver dime just by the sound on that Ace 250. And I'm not plugging the Ace 250s. There's a lot of machines out there, but that's the one I started with. And and, and just, just take your time, dig every signal, and then join a group. You know, it's it's good going out with a group of people and 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 join a club and and go to the events and and uh, and start a YouTube channel. So James, the one who found the um, token, he started a YouTube channel called Tough Run Metal Detecting, and he is great. He has passion and he's. He goes out at 4 a.m. in the morning and he just digs. And I'm sure he's going to get arrested by somebody from stalking, you know, like in the <laughs> middle of a field with his headlight on. And and and, and he digs with Oki occasionally. But, you know, we have a contest every time at Diamond Bill. And Pam, who is the chef, and I've, I've moved on from that tip, so I'm sorry about that. That's uh, okay. Uh, yeah. 
so Pam, who's the chef, she goes up, she doesn't metal detect, but the desert rat is her husband. And she cooks the fantastic, as Mark said, it's fantastic food. And, and she chooses the winner of the grand prize of, you know, our sponsors give us stuff and stuff like that to give away. And, and so James won it last year. Okay. He found some horse bridle that was just beautiful. So I'm there and I, I'm digging right next to him in this like privy area. And I find an old lock and a wood splitter and he pulls out a, a fork, a silver plated fork. And it's the first one he's ever found. And he's like, Oh, this is sweet. And I'm like, yeah, it's sweet. And, and we get to the contest and guess who wins it? <laughs> James with the silver fork. <laughs> and I'm sure there was some fixings going on there, but it was like such a hoot. And he won all this white swag and, and, and uh, he's a good guy. So if you have a chance, I'm going to, if I may, just recommend his channel. Uh, he's, a, he's a good guy, and he, he has a lot of passion for the Yeah, for sure, the, sure. Put it out the there. Tough run metal detecting. It is what? <laughs> you see, I told you you need a translator. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is gone, <laughs> so you're gonna have to, you'll have to slow down and say it one more time. Uh, tough run metal detecting. Okay. <laughs> Just run metal detecting. Tough. Like, uh, hey, I'm a tough lad. I'm I'm hard. I'm tough. Oh, well, tough. Oh, tough run metal detecting. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I'm a man without a country. <laughs> well, you've got a country now. You're very welcome in our country. Yes, you are. Thank and. You. We love you. your we love your passion, uh, and that's what attracted me to watch uh, your videos. And I remember one of the first videos that you put out. You had uh, I don't know if it was a contest or just a challenge or something for people to guess what part of the country that you or guess where you lived. Uh, tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, and, you know, I just like having fun, you know, and and I put it out there and. I said, I have a guess where I'm from. And, and it was, I had a, I think it was a hundred subscriber card, 200 subscriber contest. And I said, just for fun, you know, it just, you're still going to be entered, but have a guess where I'm from. And I got some very interesting things. Uh, and I don't show myself on video because I don't care. I mean, I, people don't care how I look. They want to see what we find, you know. And, and, and a friend of mine said, hey, hey, Rob, you know, people people would be interested just to see your face occasionally, so that, that you can be sure. I said, Come on, so I tried that a little bit, and and people, I think, I lost more subscribers than I gained. You know, so <laughs> so I haven't I haven't done that again. You know, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just you know. And then we messed up. Um, we messed up and put your picture on the promo. But we, <laughs> but we, we've had a lot of well, people. Why, yeah, we've had a lot of people in here tonight, so that didn't hurt you any. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, Gary Heckman had a question. Rob, uh, do you ever get up towards Murray? It's where the uh, dredge went through. Um, Murray, Utah. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's what he's talking about. You know, I haven't. I'm actually. I'm. I'm in Utah right now. Um, there's a coin show going on tomorrow that I'm just going to be hanging around at. Um, but uh, I, I've, I've only metal detected in Sandy area. I have this little honey hole. Uh, it's a little playground, and and you guys in Utah, leave it alone. It's where <laughs> I go when I've only got an hour. Okay, but I've pulled out. I think two or three gold rings platinum ring, earrings, loads of clad. And this thing is only about maybe 30 feet across, and it's got the wood chips in there, and, and it's a really nice little place, but that's the only place I've detected in Utah. Mm. Oh, uh, and St. George. You find any St. George? Find anything there? St. George, yeah. I found a couple of Chinese coins and about 5,000 square nails to... To put that house together. What what are the what are the dates on those Chinese coins that y'all find? 
You know, the oldest one that I've found, and I'm not very good at identifying them, there's a guy called Mark Feel, I think his name is, is P-H-F-E-I-L, I believe his last name is, and he identifies them very, very well. But I got one about 1740, um, but it doesn't count for my 1800s goal because it has to say 18-something on it. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he he ranged at about 1740s. Well, see, that's about. something that I never have found is a Chinese coin, and I I would like to I'd like to find one of those. I guess you could say that that'd be on my bucket list. But they worked with the railroad, and then they worked a lot in the uh, mining industry. And a lot of people don't know it, but whenever the the gold panners first went out in the in the uh, rush of 1849, they just had straight side pans. And then it was the Chinese that uh, figured out that they could put ripples in the in one side of the pan and, and catch the gold and the heavies. And then everybody picked up on it. So uh, the, they were industrious. Wow. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's great. I love watching your history. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was pretty good. I, I knew uh, we hunted this old home site. Of course, uh, me and another friend, uh, we hunted it. And I was digging these uh, Chinese coins. I was like, man, these are cool. I, I'd never dug any. And I think I got, like, got five or six of them. And then, of course, they had this little attachment piece on them. And, of course, I was like, well, what's that, what's that on there for? Come to find out it was like a bracelet that went around. And it just like little Chinese. <laughs> there wasn't really Chinese coins. It was just a part of a bracelet. <laughs> That's a bummer right there, I'll tell you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Denny, you got yeah. any uh, you got any parting comments before we close the show out tonight? No, it was really good, great show. I really enjoyed listening to Rob. I love his accent and uh, love to go to England with him sometime. I know uh, Butch and Anita are going over that way, so that'd be cool. I'd, I'd have to take my dais over there if I went and try it. Went over there. <laughs> I'd love yeah. to. I'd love to hunt England, and I actually have an opportunity uh, to go there. I'm not going to be able to do it, but uh, I I have been asked to go, and uh, I I wish that I could work it out, but uh, just can't do it. But I'd love to dig that old history. And I can understand Rob wanting to go back and dig his history of the country from which, you know, he was born and came from. And yep. uh, that would be special, Rob. And, Rob, we have, certainly, we have certainly enjoyed having you on. You have been a wonderful guest. Uh, we've kept you on here for we're – we're in free baseball, Butch Holcomb says. Uh, but we, uh, we certainly do appreciate it, don't we, Jeff? We sure do, and we appreciate all the listeners and uh, everybody, all the guys that's called in tonight. So this show is for you guys. Yeah, and in the chat, and and uh, I hope that we picked up some uh, British listeners tonight too. Uh, we'll <laughs> uh, Rob, we'll give a shout out to your mother. You can send her a link to the show, and uh, she can listen to the archive because I'd say it's in the middle of the night where uh, she lives right now. But she can listen to the archive, and we'll give a shout-out to her. Thank you very much, Mom. Love ya. <laughs> <laughs> and we do. We love your boy. I tell you, we do. Uh, and, guys, I put a link in the description on this uh, program here tonight, on this episode, that gives you Spud Digger's YouTube channel, also gives you his personal Facebook channel. They also have a Spud Diggers uh, group page. You can go and check that out. And uh, we always say it, and I'll say it again tonight. If you like podcasts that deal with metal detecting, be sure and check out Beyond Sight and Sound with Josh Kimmel on Sunday and Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock. Check out American Digger Relic Roundup on Monday night at 9 o'clock. All Metal Mode, Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. History Seekers is on Tuesday night at 9 o'clock. And then Hardcore Metal Detecting is on Thursdays and Saturdays. And both of those times are 8 p.m. 
And we certainly do appreciate you being on with us tonight. And we will see you next Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Relics Radio. We really do appreciate it. Be sure and join us live each Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern, here on Spreaker. Or you can catch the archive show at Relics Radio on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, or iTunes. Please take a minute and hit the like button and be sure and follow us so that you'll get notifications of all of our upcoming broadcasts. You can also find us on YouTube at Digging with Seven or Tennessee Jeff. Or you can check us out on our Relics Radio Facebook page. If you'd like to get in touch with us, then send an email to diggingwith7 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We hope you'll join us next Thursday night. And until then, get out there and dig some history.